What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, I'm going to show you how to save your fusion animations as customizable presets to use in future projects. One of my favorite things about Fusion and DaVinci Resolve is just the ability to save Fusion macros, uh, which are pretty much just Fusion presets with custom parameters and controls that you've set up to use in future projects. Um, if I come over here to Titles and my Modern Titles V1 preset pack, um, this is the exact uh, ability that I used to save all of these presets and to set up all of their controls. And if I bring one of these over and scrub through you can see that this one has a few different layers just visually. Um, it's got this text at the top, always create modern and then art at the bottom. So four text and a box here and a few lines down here. And to the right in the inspector, you can see under fusion, you have all these controls and it may seem wild, but I actually set these up so I know exactly um, what they do and where they go. And with a little look over and a little playing with, um, it's really easy to figure that out too. Um, so you can see here that I have create. I could easily replace this with you know a different word like make. Um, and I could also come down here and change the positioning. So maybe it's more lined up with the rest. And even change some of the tracking to maybe just stylistically make it pop a little more. And if I come up here to the top where it says video, I can also change the size and the position if I want to make this more of like a lower thirds type animation. Very simple. And so not only can I just drag this preset over anytime I need it, but I can also change a lot of great things about it, uh, like the font and what the text says, the color and some of the positioning and scaling. Uh, so let's jump on over into Fusion and I'll show you guys how I saved this preset and set up those controls because that can get a little confusing, but it is really simple and super, super awesome um, once you kind of get used to it. So just to get a little more space, I can hold control over here and use my mouse wheel uh, just to zoom out here and give myself a little more space. I also don't need the spline window since we're not um, making or customizing anything, we're just saving this preset. And I'll go ahead and scoot all of this over. So I'm going to be using the decoder glitch animation. Uh, I set this up in a recent video. Check that video out. It's a pretty cool little text glitch here. And if I zoom in, you can see that we've got two text layers, the top and the bottom. And we have some masks on those in these groups here that we won't need to change. And from there, we have a prism blur. We have a mosaic blur and a duplicate, which makes these little glitches in front uh, that kind of come out and back. You can see how it's kind of duplicating certain things across the screen as it comes together. Um, and some of these things we'll want to change and some of them we do not. Like we have keyframes on, I believe, the duplicate. I think we have keyframes on the blurs as well uh, because it starts out more blurred and then kind of gets normal. Uh, and also we have this text is slightly moving. The bottom is moving to the right and the top text is moving to the left. So we'll also need to be careful of that. We, we don't want to change that. So those are things we won't want controls for. Um, of course, you could allow to have controls in those positions anyway, but it could just make things more complicated in the long run. Um, to whereas if we just save this as is, then I could just swap out the text and the motion will just stay exactly the same. I don't really have to worry about those keyframes and if they could get changed. So what we need to do is just drag across all of these nodes and right click, go to macro and create macro. And this is where it gets seemingly complicated, but really, really awesome at the same time. So here it pretty much has every single control that is in the, the Fusion node workflow that you've got set up. Um, so anything that you could change is in this list, which makes it look a little overwhelming. But um, in the long run, that's really what you want because you have the ability to change or later give yourself control once the preset is set up. You can set this to control anything from the output to the scaling and zooming to positioning, colors. Um, you have a pretty endless 
amount of combinations that you could set up for these presets, which um, is what should kind of set you at ease, even though this looks a little wild. So before we got into this screen, I talked about some of the things we don't want to change. But in this screen, we only need to deal with the things that we do want to change. Things that we'll later want control of when we have the preset set up and we want to just drag it into our timeline or into Fusion later on. And so the few things that we want to change about this is really just the text. Later on, I want to be able to change the text and the color. I would really like the duplicate and all the effects to say the exact same. So I'm just going to come down here to where the text are, text 1 and 2, and I'll just start with text 2 because it's right here. And what we want to change about the text. So I'm going to collapse the image window and come right down to where it says text. And I will want to change the style of the text, the font, the style of that font. And then we'll see colors, red, green, and blue, alpha clone. So these are pretty much the controls you'll have over the color um, once the preset is set up. So we'll definitely want to click all of these. And then the size, which will be the scale of the font and um, the character spacing, which was the tracking that I used earlier on the make in Always Create Modern Art, I think is what it said. And the line spacing, just in case, I like to check that as well. And then the vertical um, anchor. Uh, now, this is kind of dependent on what you're working on. Some, in some animations later on, you may want the anchor. It's pretty much just where your, your text is sitting. Right now, um, the anchor is usually in the middle and at the bottom uh, because I have this set up to paragraph middle. It's not anchored to the left or the right, it's just in the middle. So later on, I will want control over just that vertical because if I use a font where, let's say I change the font on the top line and it cuts, it starts digging down because it's just a bigger font or it's scaled differently than this font, then I may want to anchor this one further up. So for that, I will just hit this vertical, top, center, bottom, V, anchor, boom. Bada bang, bada boom. Just as simple as that. And then horizontally, I don't want to change that anchor. And then from there, I will collapse the text. That's about all the information I'll want to change in the future. I, I strike out is not really something I usually do. Underline, that's not something I usually do. Um, and the start to end, it's not really something that I'll need to change because the start and the end, how this animates in and how it animates out are already set up in the animation. So um, I'm going to go ahead and collapse the text. Under layout, I don't need to change anything. And under transform uh, and under shading. Now, this is just awesome. I mean, this is how detailed it gets. The fact that you can set up controls to, to give text, something simple as text shading uh, later on, which for this we don't need, but that's just so awesome that you have so many options because you could set up such an advanced intricate kind of 3d fusion co composite um, and save it all as a preset with a lot of little um, fine-tuned controls uh, which is super crazy uh, and super awesome uh, so i'm going to collapse all this because we don't really need anything else other than to be able to change the color and the text itself uh, because the position is already animating itself and I don't want to mess with that. And so I'm going to do the same. Come down here to text one and collapse image. Go down to text, style, font, style, color, green, blue, alpha, size, tracking, line, and then our anchor, um, vertical anchor. And from there, we will collapse again. So now at the top, right next to macro name, we can rename our title by double clicking um, and writing in decoder, glitch title very cool and from there we can click close and it'll ask if we want to save or we can come to file and go to save as and there's a couple different ways we can save this um, we can save it right here in the uh, macro folder that it's suggesting we save it in and i'll show you guys that just by saving so now directly from fusion if i hit control spacebar you can see it right there the decoder glitch title and if yours does not come right up just search whatever the title of um, your animation is so i will just like that and it'll come right up and hit add and now if i disconnect the media out and reconnect the media out boom we have our new animation and i can change some of these parameters here let's say i want this to say the number one filmmaker that's right 
and then change this color to red it's kind of an ugly red maybe a deeper red you know doesn't even look good that doesn't even look good maybe a blue I don't know I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to get creative with it but you can not only do this with text but you can do this with any fusion composition and save it as a template or a title and also if I were to right click this and let's go to macro decoder glitch it'll bring this up for us to be able to edit and possibly change so if you saved it and you need more parameters than you actually allowed yourself to have then you can come back open it up and switch some things around and resave it and another saving option in general is if you come up to save as and then go to the parent folder above macros which is fusion and then come down to template edit titles and if you put it in here then it'll automatically pop up in your edit screen or edit tab under the titles um, making it even faster to get to if it's something that you don't need to come into fusion to grab uh, or to work with and if you can just use it in the edit screen like something like a title animation would be really simple uh, it just makes it super super easy i hope you guys enjoyed this one and if you have any comments questions or concerns leave them in the comment section below feel free to give this video a like i really appreciate that and definitely make sure to subscribe and of course i'm marcel and this has been martin filmmaker and i'll see you guys next time peace